All right. So if we look at this, it says, say I have an equation, matrix A times matrix B. Right? It looks like variables, but they're capital letters, so we know they're the matrices. Everybody okay? Yes or no? Yes? Okay. If we wanted to, say, solve for x, we can multiply both sides by the matrix A because we can't divide by a matrix. We discussed that the other day. Everybody good? But I need you to notice something. See how the inverse is written on the left-hand side both times? Yeah? So we, when we're doing regular, like if I 2x equals, uh, no, let's do this with a fraction that we'll use a whole number. So 1 third x equals 5. Say that was my equation. Most of us would go like this. Oops. Yes? See how one time I wrote it on the left and the other time I wrote it on the right? Like on the left of the expression and then on the right of the other expression? And we do that because of space. Right? There's no space on the left of the 5. So it's easier for me to write the 3 out there. And because with numbers, multiplication is commutative, that's perfectly acceptable. Is everybody with me there? But if I try to do that with matrices, and matrix multiplication is not commutative, that's not going to be acceptable. Does that make sense to everybody? So you're going to have to take the step of rewriting the problem where you have space to put that inverse matrix. Otherwise, you're going to get the wrong answers, or you're just not even going to get an answer. Is everybody cool with that? But it's otherwise roughly the same idea as multiplying by like the reciprocal. OK? All right. So we have this matrix equation. So we have this cute little 2 by 2. It's multiplied by some matrix x. And interestingly, we end up with a 2 by 1 matrix. Well, we know that that's possible, right? Because as long as the inside dimensions match, you end up with a matrix of the dimensions of the outside. So even though that looks weird, it is possible. Everybody OK? So when I go in here and do this, I'm going to have to multiply by the inverse of this matrix. So this is the problem I'm actually doing. I do actually have to do that in that order, or it doesn't work out properly. So the big key here is the order on the multiplication. The inverse itself is not new. Is everybody all right? So let's practice doing the inverse. If I want to do the inverse of a 2 by 2, you all know that first you have to do what? Get the determinant. OK, so if I want to take the determinant of that matrix, and I'm going to be lazy and just write an empty matrix, OK? The determinant of that matrix, we know that we take the diagonal product 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and we subtract the product of the other diagonal, so we're subtracting 1, so the determinant is negative 3. Everybody OK? Yes? All right. Then I'm just, instead of rewriting everything, I'm going to say I'm doing this little part, OK? This little part says I'm supposed to take the reciprocal of that determinant and use it as a scalar multiplier on this modified matrix. Um, the first and the last swap positions, and the other two take opposite signs. Are we OK? Yes? OK. So then I put the matrix uh, one third, one third, one third, and then negative two thirds. So that matrix is really what this one is. Are we OK? Now, I'm doing a 2 by 2 times a 2 by 1. Do I have to do that by hand? Nope. You only have to multiply 2 by 2s by each other by hand. This you're allowed to use the calculator for. So you had to find the inverse by hand because it was a 2 by 2. But you get to then plug that into your calculator and multiply it by the other matrix, the 6, 6 3. What do we get? I don't have an answer key, so can somebody just verify that really is 3 over 0? Not that I don't trust you, Cooper. It's just a lot of button pushing, and it's really easy to push a wrong button. We got 3 over 0 as well. Awesome. Confirmed data point. I know, Cooper, it's rough. I'm sorry. But you saw me make a mistake, right? So if I can't even trust me, we got to be fair. All right, are we good with number 1? Yes, number 1 is good? OK. Number 2. Now, we have our ref 
to solve a system using matrices. There is another way to do it, and this is it. So we're going to look at an alternative way. Now, I will tell you, I don't prefer this one. I prefer RF. I think it's easier. So when I'm given the choice, I use RF. For this particular homework assignment that you will do tomorrow, not today, you're going to practice doing this method so that you know it's a possibility. But I'm not going to require it of you on a test. Okay? On a test, I'm going to say, here's the system. Solve it using a matrix. You will decide which method you prefer. Good? Yes? All right. So this sets things up differently. Which will be a square matrix. We have a variable matrix. And then we're going to have our result matrix. Okay? So we're going to have three different matrices instead of having one big one. So when I look at this, it's all set up in standard form and how there are different variables and different equations. Okay, that doesn't work out for a matrix. You first got to make it all look the same. Everybody good? So when I think about it, I'm going to think of A minus 3C equals 7. The other ones are in an acceptable order. But when I go to make my matrix, I'm first going to have a efficient matrix. Now the first row is 3, 2, 0. What's my second row? 4, 0, negative 3. And my third row? 0, 6, negative 6. Then I'm going to have my coefficient matrix, which is going to be A, B, C. Are we okay? Yes? Then I'm going to have my constant matrix, which will be? Uh, 5, 7, negative 5. 5, 7, negative 5. How are we doing? We're okay? All right, so I see big matrices. Is this a by hand problem or a calculator problem? <gasps> you'll, you'll never find out. I think you'll find out tomorrow, but we'll stop there for today.